All right, well, hi, everyone. Wow, you all quieted very quickly. Um, good morning, my name is Anthony Volkar. I'm the chair of the Building Resilient Yellow Summit. We're really excited that you're all here and joining us in person, no less. Um, if you didn't know, we had this planned to meet in person in October. That did not happen. Uh, but we're really fortunate and glad that you're all able to join us today, all in the spirit of building a stronger Yellow County. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to just start um, with a land acknowledgement. So we should take a moment to acknowledge the land on which we are gathered for this event. For thousands of years, this land has been the home of the Putwin people. Today, there are three federally recognized Putwin tribes, the Kachildihi Band of Wintun Indians of the Kalusa Indian Community, the Kletzaldihi Band of Wintun Indians, and the Yochadihi Wintun Nation. The Putwin people have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries, and it has been cherished and protected as elders have instructed the young through generations. We are honored and grateful to be gathered here today on their traditional lands. All right, now with that, um, as always with a conference of this scope, we wanna thank our sponsors. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, again, today is a free conference, and we're able to do that in part because of the generous sponsorship that we have um, in coordination with a few groups. Uh, so uh, first off, my employer, Yellow County Office of Education, we are well represented. Uh, we also wanna give thanks. You can clap for YCOE, that's okay. We also want to give thanks to the UC Davis Perinatal Origins of Disparities Center. If you hear us using the acronym, it's the POD Center. Thank you again. Uh, we want to give thanks to uh, Hui International. I didn't see a representative today, uh, but they have been a generous supporter. Oh, thank you. Great. Hui International, thank you for joining us. And last but not least, uh, CASA. So CASA stands for the Court Appointed Special Advocates of Yolo County. Thank you to their team. Um, with that, if there are any youth that are here for the youth track and you are not in the right room at this moment, the youth track is down the hall. Uh, so if you want to flag, if you want to go see Bonnie at the registration, she can direct you that way. But if there's anyone here for the youth track, we're going to head you to a different space. They're ready to start for you. Now with that, we just want to briefly acknowledge a few elected officials we have that joined us this morning. Uh, first off, I'd like to just uh, introduce uh, Angel Brahas. He's the chair of the Yale County Board of Supervisors. Thank you, Supervisor Brahas, for joining us. Um, I saw Garth Lewis. Garth Lewis is the Yellow County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, for joining us. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Tico Zendejas. He is Vice President of the Yellow County Board of Education. Um, and I saw Rogelio Viograna. He is a board trustee for Woodland Joint Unified, right in the back. Doing a quick scan to make sure it didn't forget anybody. I think that's everyone. All right, well, thank you again. And for all of our non-electeds, again, thank you for taking the time this morning, for being here. Uh, we're really, really excited that we were able to join us. Um, up on the screen, you're gonna see our planning committee. Again, we couldn't do this alone. We had a really great planning committee who was able to help and support all of us. Um, we couldn't have done it without them. This team, again, has been meeting since before October, and so it has been a long time in planning this, and we're just, again, glad that we were able to offer this to me today. And um, as you will see, if there are uh, folks that you see around with flowers, that is a signifier that they are on the planning committee. If you have any questions or need any assistance, please feel free to stop and, and talk with them. Now with that, um, I need to introduce this. Let me pull up my notes really fast. Uh, we are, we're fortunate to be able to get an ATN kit. So it stands, it's a calm kit. It is uh, a resource for family, educators, and community. This kit is designed for educators and those who work with children to have a basic kit of tools and ideas for helping students to get regulated. Uh, there is a silicone sponge, which is good for tactile and sensory input. There's a pinwheel. There's as well connected messages, a brain noodle, which I don't know what that is, um, a color changing pencil, a water wheel timer, calm strips, a wall push up poster, chair boards. So you can see it's a very nice kit. Uh, they are great prizes. So with that, we drew our first name. Oh, I do know who it is. Uh, so Nicole Casterhan. Congratulations. I saw her. I saw her. If someone from Head Start, great. <laughs> this is not Nicole, but congratulations. <laughs> and we will have three more kits that will be out there today. Um, everyone who is registered today, uh, we put your names automatically into the pool. Uh, so please stick around, and we'll be able to hand those out. Now with that, I am pleased to introduce two lovely individuals in our community. 
um, I'm going to introduce Susan Jones and Tessa Smith. Uh, Susan Jones, yes, go ahead and clap. I am the chair for the summit. These are our two lovely chairs for the Resilient YOLO Collaborative. Uh, Tessa Smith is the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Coordinator at Yolo County Health and Human Services Agency, and Susan Jones is the Principal Consultant at Creative Behavior uh, Systems and is a longtime ACES trainer, which you will be talking about today. So, welcome. Thank you, Anthony. And thank you for acknowledging just how many people took part in getting us all together again. I want to acknowledge the people that are online, but we want to welcome you to this summit at long last, being able to see our partners and a lot of us here together, first time we've been in a big crowd. So I don't know, I just want to acknowledge that. But we want to welcome you to this day where we're going to share information, strategies for building resilience and offer resources. And like Anthony said, this was a very organic process. Yes, we had a steering committee, but everybody in this room, I think we've been working together for a while. And it takes all of that to build a resilient yellow, and that's for sure. So I wanna recognize our friends, our neighbors, our community members online, as well as in this room. We are so glad to be present with you and have your support, and we support you. Thanks. I'm not sure I can follow that up, but awesome, Tessa. One thing that Tessa and I do want to acknowledge is our working groups. Resilient YOLO is a collaborative that is a whole bunch of like-minded individuals that you're going to see today, a whole bunch of that same information. And in our collaborative, we have working groups. And our Be The One lead for our working group called Be The One is Lynn Arner. I'd like Lynn to stand up for a quick second. We'd give her a thank you, thank you. Allison Rodriguez is our lead for our diversity, equity, and inclusion work group. Thank you. And of course, Anthony Volkar is our lead for today, our Building a Resilient YOLO. Thank you. Thank you again to our Resilient YOLO chairs. All right, with that, um, and if I need a cue, I have an intro, uh, but we, uh, unfortunately, Representative Mike Thompson was not able to join us in person today. Obviously, he is in Washington, uh, but we were able to secure a video from him that we just wanted to briefly play. Uh, Congressman Mike Thompson was first elected to Congress in 1998 and currently represents California's fifth conditional congressional district. Um, if re-elected to Congress in November, he would represent the newly drawn fourth congressional, congressional district, which will include most of Yolo County. So again, a brief uh, video welcome from Congressman Mike Thompson. Good morning. I'm honored to join you today as you kick off the annual Resilient YOLO Summit. And I'm grateful to Dr. Lewis for inviting me to welcome you this morning. This year's theme of resilience through healing, healing through resilience is especially important and it's most timely. YOLO County's children and families face many challenges and traumas from the COVID-19 pandemic to food insecurity to experiencing homelessness and much more. Today's powerful speakers and important workshops are focused on supporting our young people in Yolo County. They will help build awareness about childhood trauma and create methods to improve the lives of at-risk youth. And as leaders serving Yolo County's children and families, I applaud you for coming together today to discuss how we can take steps to ensure health equity, strengthen resilience from trauma, and improve community outcomes for young people. Most important, thank you for what you do every single day to serve our community and improve the lives of at-risk youth. Please know that you have an advocate in me and I will always work to make sure you receive the support you deserve at the federal level. I will now turn it over to my friend and a fabulous supporter of families, Supervisor Angel Barajas. Thank you. Ten um, towns that are unincorporated and um, they are throughout, mixed throughout the rural area. We have a great need, especially coming out of the pandemic, of our children, our youth, 
who went through a lot of trauma. And those stories have been told to you, been told to us at the Board of Supervisors level and other governmental leaders to really do something in order for us to get our youth back on track. And so today's um, host of workshops is going to do just that. And I implore you to not only listen and write down ideas, but really talk to one another and share your experiences. We have a wealth of knowledge here. You guys are all subject matter experts. We need you to be able to provide this great insight so that way we can use these tools back into our communities. Our youth in our school districts really need us. Our youth, our children that are re getting ready to enter uh, kindergarten and preschool also need those tools in order for us to be more resilient and come out. Look, our youth is our, is our generation. Our youth is gonna take over leadership positions. In five to 10 years, 15 years from now, they're gonna be up on this stage or they're gonna be out there in the audience and they're gonna be teaching others how to become more resilient. And being resilient, at least for me, means that whatever obstacle comes at you, a mental obstacle, a physical obstacle, we need to be able to have the tools in order for us to be able to bounce back. That is so difficult for many of us who have different challenges, such as mental health challenges or disability, or just really don't have the attention at home. And so we know that there's many of our youth that are really seeking our um, advice, subject matter expert advice, and also just really our care. And so that's what we do here in Yolo County. We take care of our people. So please enjoy this uh, summit. And I'd like to thank all of those that were able to organize the summit. I know it takes a lot of brain power, a lot of collaboration, a lot of funding, um, and that doesn't come naturally. That comes with very important people in this room that were able to take their time and talk to the right people to make this happen. So please enjoy and welcome to Yolo County. Thank you. All right, thank you again to Supervisor Barajas. All right, with that, it is actually time for another uh, calm kit to be given away. Um, I do have the definition of a brain noodle, if you've been curious. It is a soft, tactile input, bendable into a variety of shapes. <laughs> I, I, I just had to find out. All right, so with that, um, our second recipient of the um, calm kit is uh, Tony Buffington from UC Davis. Is Tony here with us? Oh, perfect. Great. We'll bring that to you. Thank you. Congratulations. And with that, um, I want to introduce uh, Tracy Farver. Tracy has served as Executive Director of Casa of Yolo County since 2011. She has over 25 years of direct service to adults and children experiencing homelessness, and she is a huge community advocate here in Yolo County, and we're very lucky to have her join us today. So thank you, Tracy. Ooh, I like that picture. Good morning, everybody. It's really nice to be here this morning. Uh, if you were uh, expecting to see Jane Stevens, sorry to disappoint you. Not, not just Jane Stevens, but the Jane Stevens. So it was my, my pleasure to be asked to um, fill in <clears throat> because Jane couldn't be here today. Jane is the founder and publisher of PacesConnection.com and was an integral part of the beginning of Resilient YOLO, which I'm happy to share that story. Um, do we have a clicker or should I just tell you when to hit the next slide? What's that? Okay. I might just only use one slide and it'll be the first one if we can get to that. So, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just give you a, a brief rundown of how Resilient YOLO started, and then uh, an overview of uh, PACES. Oh, cool, next one. So how did we get here, here today in this room and here where Resilient YOLO is, and, and how much further can we go? Uh, but that image, what, what's with the image up there? Um, the, uh, the, the ripples in a pond, and we've used that before at Resilient YOLO Summits, 
And, and there's so much in that metaphor of those ripples. Uh, as you, as we all uh, go through the, the summit today and the learning that's going to happen, uh, one thing that's really important when we talk about, about ACEs, about PACEs, and I'll talk about that acronym in a minute, um, and what I love about this subject matter is that when we process this information and this learning, we really have to process how it applies to us first. It's so important to filter it through our own experience, our own lens, our own history first, and then begin to broaden our understanding outward, just like the ripples on that pond, right? And, and so as you go through this day, everything that you're taking in and you're learning is how does that apply to me and my own experience? And then how can I apply that understanding more broadly to my own family, my own neighborhood, my own work, my colleagues, my, my community, and the folks that I'm serving? And what that's what's one of the things that's so exciting about this work is it completely shatters the barriers that oftentimes our systems have created in which we have service providers doing something for clients. No, that is not what this is about. This is about people, human beings, using systems that have been created to create thriving communities. And so I'm gonna try to model that idea in my presentation by sharing the history of Resilient YOLO through my own personal journey with it. In September of 2013, as I was the executive direct, director of YOLO County CASA then, and uh, Shonda Cruz was working with YOLO County Probation and had created a huge collaborative with a whole bunch of folks from different agencies in Yolo County as they were working on um, uh, securing a grant from the Sierra Health Foundation for the Positive Youth Justice Initiative. Um, it was a really exciting effort that they had drawn together to <clears throat> try to create a multi-year grant to transform the way Yolo County was doing juvenile justice. Uh, and as part of joining that collaborative, I was taking a training where I was learning about uh, ACEs and trauma-informed work. And, and the webinar that I had signed up for was through, uh, was, being, was being offered through ACEs Connection. And I realized the founder of ACEs Connection was Jane Stevens, and she happens to live in Yolo County. And I connected with Jane and I said, hey Jane, do you know what's going on in Yolo County? Thinking about the work that Yolo County Probation was doing. And um, she was like, no, I'd love to learn about it. Well, long story short, uh, one of the successes that you may not know about, uh, uh, it, mixed blessing here, um, the Sierra Health Foundation did not award Yolo County Probation the grant that they worked so hard to secure. And the reason being was they said, you know, you all are doing such great work in Yolo County, we actually think you're gonna achieve your goals without this grant money. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was hard, that was rough. Um, and you know what, I actually think they were right. Um, I think Yolo County's uh, probation, juvenile justice system has done a phenomenal job of incorporating so many of these pr principles. But that collaborative, we continued to meet, and there are folks that you're gonna see here today um, and agencies that are completely represented here that were gathering in 2013 and said, this work around ACEs is really, really important around being trauma-informed, around developing resilience, is so important to our community. We need to keep gathering, and we need to find a way to to share this message with our community and infuse it into our work. And that's where Resilient YOLO was born. We had representatives from probation, from child welfare, from Communicare, from the County Office of Education, uh, from Empower YOLO, from, <clears throat> from maternal child and adolescent mental health, 
uh, we had Jane from, from ACES Connection, and we, and we met and we gathered. And Resilient YOLO has been an unfunded collaborative that has put on these summits because agencies like the County Office of Education and YOLO County Casa and everyone who's participated has simply participated because they believed in the work. And it's been really, really exciting to be a part of. Um, and then the Pod Center, because I can't remember the full acronym, came along and said, you guys are doing great. We're going to provide you with a grant, and we're going to increase what, what, you, what you can do. Um, what is ACES and PACES? Um, raise your hand if you, don't, if you haven't heard ACES before. Cool. OK, cool. All right, I love that. Um, so, so in the mid-'90s, uh, a couple of researchers, Kaiser Permanente in San Diego and, 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 a, um, and a scientist from the Centers for Disease Control, published a study where they linked 10 what they called adverse childhood experiences with health outcomes later in life, adulthood. And what they found was that there was a very, very strong link with a higher number of these adverse childhood experiences. They were looking at 10 specifically, five related to abuse and neglect, sexual, physical, or emotional abuse, and sexual, I'm, I'm sorry, emotional or physical neglect. And then there were five related to household functioning. And those were having a parent who was in, incarcerated, a parent with a mental illness or a substance abuse disorder, having domestic violence in the home, or parental separation or divorce. And they found that the higher the number of those ACEs that an adult had experienced as a child, the higher their risk for uh, health outcomes, negative health outcomes or behaviors later in life. And I actually, I think I'm gonna have you skip, uh, skip ahead a couple slides. There's um, a really good graphic so just, there you go. So that graphic all the way on the right, you see <clears throat> when we have four ACEs, the relative risk of a large number of physical and mental health outcomes, such as obesity, diabetes, depression, suicide attempts, STDs, et cetera, the relative risk goes way up. Um, and I'm going to have you skip ahead another slide, please. What we have learned in the years since is that, um, and, and, and the researchers, Rob Anda and Vince Felitti, who did this ACE study, knew at the time that the, the 10 adversities they were looking at in, in this research were not meant to be all-inclusive. There, there are a whole bunch of other adversities that children may experience um, but those were just the 10 that seemed to be most common or prevalent. Um, but we know that there are a whole range of other adversities that, that can impact children's development. And, and so now we're looking at um, adversities in the environment, such as climate crisis, uh, natural disasters, pandemics. We're looking at adversities in the community, uh, things like living in, um, in neighborhoods where there are high rates of poverty, um, high rates of violence happening in the streets, et cetera. So we know that these things can impact the development of children. It can also impact the stress that families are experiencing. And, <clears throat> and making sure that we are creating opportunities to support um, neighborhoods and support families to reduce the impact of those stressors is what today is all about, is what Resilient YOLO is all about. Um, that, that as we understand how these adversities impact children and impact families, impact adults, um, when we can begin to reduce the impact of these toxic stressors and reduce the um, reduce what's at the core of these stressor, stressors, provide uh, 
increase supports wherever we're able to, use the systems that we have in place um, to provide supports, we can, we can create opportunities for all families to thrive. Next slide, please. So, the idea here, and, and I'm sorry, that, that, was, that was a really brief synopsis on ACEs. Um, the P in, in PACEs is positive childhood experiences, and that's, and that's what builds resilience for children and families, is that along with adverse experiences, there are positive childhood experiences. Um, and, and when we can increase, increase the positivity, increase the positivity for children, for their families, um, understanding that through, through connection and social connectedness, uh, through those concrete supports, um, we are building resilience, again, personally, and then in families, and then in neighborhoods, and then in communities. And, and these are some ideas about what it is um, on a systemic level that leads to those outcomes. Parental resilience, social connections, concrete supports in times of need, social and emotional competence, knowledge of parenting and child development. These are family strengthening factors that have been identified. As I wrap this up, what I wanna say is, this is an absolutely exciting moment in Yolo County, okay? All roads lead to resilience in Yolo County right now. And you need to know that resilient Yolo, ACE is aware, the Yolo County convening on children, youth, and families, Yolo County strategic plan, the American Rescue Plan funding, the Yolo County Child Abuse Prevention Council, the Yolo Family Strengthening Network, the Trauma-Informed System of Care Interagency Leadership Team, and, and, and all, the, all the nonprofits and all the leaders that are gathered in this room and many that are not, are all focused very much on these ideas right here today. We have an opportunity right now to really shape the future for families and children because we have this understanding. And it's, it's happening in this room and it's happening outside this room if we can, again, take what we're learning, apply it to our own understanding of how we got to this place how we, how we take the information that we're learning today, apply it to our own lives, break down these artificial barriers around, well, this is who I am at work, and this is who I am at home, and just say, I'm a human being, and I'm here to help, and I'm, I'm gonna do my best today, <clears throat> and I wanna make sure that that I have an opportunity to thrive, and my neighbor has an opportunity to thrive, and anybody who walks through the door at Yolo County Casa has an opportunity to thrive, whether it's an employee, or a youth, or a volunteer, that's just what we're all about. And if we can keep all these groups and collaboratives and leaders aligned, we're all gonna get there. And today is an opportunity for us to keep that ship pointed in that direction. So let's go do it. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. And again, as Tracy alluded to, um, we unfortunately didn't have um, our partner here with us uh, who unfortunately had an emergency, um, but we are really gracious again. Thank you again to Tracy Farber for stepping in. Um, we're fortunate to have you here. Um, I really heard that as a call to action. It would harken back to the theme. I don't know if you noticed as you came in, the theme for today is resilience through healing, healing through resilience. And where that started from was a conversation we had. So we came up with the name, and then we started asking, well, wait, is being more resilient can help us heal, or do we need to heal first to be more resilient? And that's when the aha moment is that it really is that cycle that Tracy was talking about. We really need all those action steps together 
working. Um, and so we hope, you know, as all of you, we've, we've acknowledged, I acknowledge in many spaces that there's a lot of healing that needs to happen in our community, maybe amongst yourself, amongst the folks that you serve. And so again, uh, like Tracy said, today is really a call for action for all of us to say, what can we do to help each other, uh, to help our community really be stronger? So thank you for that, Tracy. All right, with that, uh, we are going to move. Um, so Tracy did a great job of setting up what is Resilient Yellow, what are ACEs, what we wanted to acknowledge, and she started to talk about the ACEs Aware work that's being done here specifically in Yolo County. Um, we've invited Dr. Jen, Jennifer Phipps uh, to come up and just sp speak specifically about the work that's being done in Yolo County, which is really innovative. Uh, so Dr. Phipps is a project scientist at UC Davis. Her research focuses on prevention of cardiovascular disease, uh, particularly during pregnancy and postpartum, and she is working for the UC Davis Pod Center that we've mentioned. Uh, so please welcome uh, Dr. Jennifer Phipps. Hello, everybody. Um, so I actually just want to jump right in. Do we have my slides? I saw them a second ago, I think. Um, so what ACE is Aware is doing in Yellow County, so Tracy mentioned a little bit. So we have a, a, a partnership that formed between the Perinatal Origins of Disparities Center at UC Davis and Resilient YOLO back right before the pandemic, I think um, kind of late 2019, fall of 2019. And we were able to get a small grant to just get that partnership kind of official and rolling. And then a little later, we got a much larger grant through ACE is Aware. And the, um, can you go to my first, uh, my next slide, please? And the, the ACE is Aware project that we are doing is building a, a, well, it's actually implementing, which I'll tell you a little later, a trauma-informed network of care in Yolo County. And so I wanted to start on my first slide with what is a trauma-informed network of care? And in my mind, this is, so the network is a network that supports a community, and that it can be trauma-informed means that the members of the community, the, the people who are working in the different service sectors, um, we can do education for everybody about what it means to be trauma-informed, aware of how ACEs affect health, about how um, you know talking about something may trigger someone to feel something that happened from their past, right? And how can we, in all of the areas of our community, be aware of those things so that our members of our community can thrive? And our, our children, the families, adults, everybody. Uh, next slide, yes. So this is a, you can't really read it. I'm going to zoom in in a minute. But I wanted to mention first the three types of grants that ACE is Aware offered. So there is a planning grant, so planning for a network, trauma-informed network of care. So just pulling the pieces together. Um, there is one that was for planning and implementation. So do a little bit of planning and then implement the plan. And then there is a type that was just implementing. And Yolo County and Contra Costa County are the two counties in California California that got these larger implementation grants because of all the work that all of you in this room have been doing over the past many, many years, we were able to, um, ra you know, we didn't have a lot of planning to do. All the pieces were there. We just wanted to implement that network of care. So if you can go to the next slide, just zoom in. I don't know if you can read that very well, but you can see the, um, the darker orange are the planning grants. So there's quite a few of those kind of scattered around. And then the green are the implementation grant, one of them being Yolo County. And then the blue are the ones where they were doing some planning and some implementing. The next slide, just to kind of, so you can see a lot of the, um, you know, so this ACE is aware funding was kind of scattered throughout California. Next slide. Okay, so we, um, as Tracy said, we started with this, you know, the small grant with the collaboration between Resilient YOLO and the Pod Center. And then for this award, we pulled together a lot of other partners from around the county. So, and the idea was we have our two federally qualified healthcare centers, Winters Healthcare and Communicare. And Communicare has the three clinics in YOLO County. And so our idea was that if we could take, um, if we could at those clinics, start doing ACEs screening and ACEs education, and then 
make referrals when patients are at the medical at their medical providers, whether they're there for a well child visit, they're there for the, because they're sick, um, whatever the reason, that then they can get referred out to the different community services available. And so we then partnered with Yolo County Children's Alliance, First Five Yolo, Help Me Grow. Um, let's see. Those are so those are the ones that we have now, and we're also accepting new partnerships. So I realize I didn't put my contact information up here, but anyone here wants to join our network officially, we would love to have you. Um, there's a partnership form, and we can talk about it. But um, one of the things that we are doing is you'll see this little Unite Us label. So that's our shared referral platform that we've adopted for this Aces Aware project. And so everyone on our all of, all the members of our team are also onboarded with Unite Us. And this means that when the patient is at their medical provider, the medical provider can then use Unite Us to refer them out to different services in the community. And this also allows us as um, researchers to then look at how our network is functioning. Are referrals being made? Are they being closed? Are people going, are, you know, are they getting the services that they need? How long is it taking them to get those services? Things like that. Um, and I have up here too the Yolo County Community Leadership Board. So this is a board that we have created because we really think our community members should be leading this effort. They need to be telling us what's important, how are we doing, are we doing a good job, what can we do better? And so we reached out to all of our partners on this grant to ask them to help us identify individuals for this leadership board. And actually, um, we also have a community engagement specialist who we hired as part of this award, Jasmine Cuellar, and she is going to be presenting with some of the members from the Community Leadership Board who are so, um, I'm so happy that they are here. Uh, they're going to be in session two, um, 1110 in the Community Connections Room if you want to learn more about how we're in, um, involving that, the community for this effort. Next slide. So the main goals of our uh, the things that we wanted to do with creating this trauma-informed network of care, you can, there's a bunch of little animations. You can just push them all. I was going to if I was doing it myself, it'd be easier, but okay. So now they're there. Um, the first thing was we wanted to increase trauma-informed care education and training. So this was for all the people working in the community, but also for community members. We have um, partnered with a couple different um, organizations who are providing some training in these areas so that we can be more trauma-informed as a community. Um, the second thing we wanted to do was to increase the number of ACEs screenings going on in our county. And I'd like to, pre um, to add to this that it wasn't just that we want to screen more people. Because what we felt like is while we're, we, we first offer information about what are ACEs. And then we ask them, would you like to be screened? You know, it's not like this, you know, trying to screen everybody kind of thing. But in doing that, we're then educating about what ACEs are. And so we actually created a, a video that clinics can use, or anyone actually, if you're interested in this video, um, again, please, a lot of these, uh, if you're, I'm sure that someone, if you ask one of the organizers, they can give you my email address. But we have a video that we've created made with some of our uh, lovely um, partners in our, in our grant who did some recording about talking about what ACEs are, why it's important to share the information about your past uh, trauma with your healthcare provider if you'd like to. Um, and there's also a little animation about it. And so this little video can be played on a tablet at the clinics. And then there's, um, then people watching the video can decide after seeing that if they'd like to screen or not. Um, so that was, so that's kind of how we're, we're doing this, um, this process. Um, the other thing is, you know, that, that helps, that video helps with educating families, patients, community members, which is part of our goal. Um, another thing is we wanted to have that a shared referral platform. And so that's Unite Us, right? So this is a platform that all of our partners are using, trying to simplify and streamline the referral process um, to just make things easier. Let's see, community engagement. Like I said, the community leadership board, um, me talking to all of you. Uh, we really want to engage our community in this work. And the last thing is we want to try to help with burnout, right? So our workers are really overloaded in all sectors of everywhere providing service, right? Our medical workers, our behavioral health 
um, therapists, our social workers, um, people at our community-based organizations. It's, it's everyone, I mean, we just came out of a pandemic, or we're still really in a pandemic, right? There's a lot that those people are doing, and we wanna try to support them and try to help any way we can with this network. That was hopefully the video helps, um, hopefully a shared referral, or you, um, the referral platform being a single one can help, and any way that we can help, we're trying to. Next slide. So I wanna come about, talk about a couple of challenges and opportunities that we faced, and um, we're about, so the end of our grant period is end of June, so we're kind of there, but we're, we've extended that to the end of December, so we have some more work to do. Um, so as we've been working on building this network, um, next slide, please. Uh, the first opportunity, I would like to say, is involving our community. So we were happy to be able to find a way to involve them in our work. And again, go talk to, uh, go see Jasmine's and our community leadership board talk a little later today for that, more information there. Next slide. And one other challenge we had was linking data across partners. So we are using Unite Us, and we can learn about referrals that way, but if we really wanna monitor the health of the people in our network, we can't be looking at any kind of personally identifiable information, names, date of birth, zip codes, I mean, any of that information, but we would really like to see that across the, the um, all of our different partners on our grant. So if you click one more time, yeah, there's this, it's called LinkJet, and I can talk to you more about it if you're interested, but what it does is it, the, each organization can run this on their own organization's computer, and then at the end, it gives us a database where everyone is linked together, but without any identifiable information, so that we can really monitor the health and how our network is working. Um, so this is a, a big question, and I think Jasmine's going to touch on this a little later too, but I wanted to mention it here that one, I'd say that this was a challenge and an opportunity. We, um, as part of the ACES Aware funding, they want you to increase ACES screening, but we were a little concerned with what happens to that number after you've done a screening at a medical provider's office? Where does that, your ACES score go? And um, you know, it's when you're in a medical doctor's office, you have you take your blood pressure, that goes in your medical record, you get your weight, it goes in your record. If you have a score, it goes in your record, and then you get referred to a different doctor, you get referred somewhere else, and it's not as trauma informed, and they ask you about what's this number in your chart? I mean, is that so we were very concerned about this, and um, we took this in with this to our leadership board, asked them, they were also concerned about this. And so what we decided to do with our workflow and our our clinics is in our, in our video that we created is that after you learn about ACEs, if you would like to screen, you are then allowed to screen and then you are again again asked, would you like to share this number or not? And if you don't, then you know that can be personal information. You learned about ACEs, you got you learned your score, you don't have to tell anybody what it is. Um, and if you want to share that with your medical provider, you of course can. And um, so anyway, that was a, a challenge and an opportunity that we I feel like faced with this um, uh, project. All right. And the other thing is a, a, our, shared, our shared referral platform. So as I said, we chose Unite Us for this proposal, for this project. Uh, there are a couple other options, Aunt Bertha, 211. Um, so we did choose Unite Us, and we're that's actually part of our evaluation that we're going to be doing as a network, is deciding, did this work well for us? How is it working? Because I think it, um, that's an important piece. We want to, like I said, streamline um, things, make it easier for people. So is this platform the best? That was another, it's still a challenge, we're working on it. What's the future? So next week there's an ACES Aware conference in Long Beach and we have some of our members going to that conference where they'll be networking with other counties, seeing what's going on across the state, what other people are doing, challenges that they're facing, how they're addressing those. Um, so that's exciting for us to get to go to that next week. And then we have a third round of funding which our Communicare clinic is going to spearhead uh, this time. It needed to be written by um, the, from the clinic side of things. So uh, we, UC Davis is still going to be involved on the evaluation piece. And um, But yeah, we're really hoping that we can continue to um, our momentum and our funding to keep this network growing and thriving and, um, and working for our community. So the next slide is just thank you. I am so glad to be here. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you again to Jennifer and the UC Davis Pod Center. And this would be a good space to acknowledge Dr. Leanne Simmons, who unfortunately is on sabbatical, couldn't join us today, but, but has also been really instrumental in the work in Yolo County. So again, thank you to all that you're doing um, in your work there. All right, um, I believe, yep. I believe we're actually giving one more calm kid away. Um, <laughs> this is actually third or fourth, so there's just one more. I had to check my notes. I want to make sure I didn't give an extra one away. Uh, so let me look at my notes. Oh, okay. Uh, so I believe this person has access to use this in her facility. Uh, so Justine Jimenez from the city of West Sacramento. Coming up, it's a calm kit. It'll be great for working with the students. And as you're doing that, um, we can go ahead and bring up Tessa Smith. Um, if you've been to this conference before, one of the things that I always remember and take away is a mindfulness moment. For all of us in our busy lives, we probably don't take enough time. And the queen of mindfulness herself is here uh, to give us back some of that tranquility and peace in our lives. Thank you, Anthony. You know, anybody that's ever called my office or my cell phone, after a brief message, I'll go, listen, nobody knows that we're not actually talking. Use this moment and take a deep breath. Go ahead. Nobody knows what we're doing. You know, take a deep breath. And I can't tell you the number of people that call me back to say, oh, my God, I forgot to take a deep breath. Whew, I needed that. Well... As we've been talking about this morning, we are here, we're talking about resilience and just simply taking a deep breath is healing, it's free, you can do it where you're at. And in our days, these days, actually the last couple of years, we've been going double time. You know what happened with Zoom? You know, we started penciling in our schedules just back to back to back because we didn't have to go from Woodland to West Sacramento. We all became masters of multitasking and we began a really stress-filled cycle. And the truth of the matter is that some of us have already gone through some of the hardest days in our lives. And we are still here. We're here in this room. We're here online. That's a measure of resilience. But now what's true is, you know, if you go on a long trip like the one we've been on, you know, every once in a while, you got to pull over and rest yourself. You got to pull over and restore and refresh yourself or you were going to run out of gas. So we need a minute, and we deserve a minute to just take a deep breath. And so I'm going to ask you to place your feet firmly on the floor and just feel the ground up underneath your feet, underneath these floorboards, concrete. We are connected to the earth. And if you're comfortable, you can close your eyes. You're among friends. Or just lower your gaze. Look out the window. And just breathe. Just breathe, my friends. Just taking slow, deep breaths in and of itself is a healing action. It connects all through our nervous systems and brings calm. So let's just breathe a minute. And we'll start with a couple of deep breaths. And with each breath, notice without judgment, if you're holding any tightness in your body, let that be okay. As you're breathing, 
if you have any ouchies, any popos, any hurts, let your mind's eye go to that space and breathe in and release that pain, release that tension. As you're breathing, if there are any distracting thoughts that come into your mind, just observe them and let them go. You see, when we breathe like this, we create a little space between our experience and our reaction to that experience. And it's within this space that we can find some compassion, some patience, and realize our inner potential to meet our experiences with more kindness towards ourselves and towards others. None of us are our best selves every day, but every day we give and do the best we can for our families, for the organizations we work for, for the communities that we serve. We've been through a lot to get here today. We deserve this moment. We are good and we are worthy and we are more than enough to meet this moment. So take a couple more deep breaths. And when you're ready, come back and be present in this room. Did anyone else need that? <laughs> Thank you again, Tessa. All right, I apologize for moving to announcement mode and very functional logistical mode. Uh, but uh, yes, no, you're good. Come on back. <laughs> Did... Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie. Um, this is the glue. Bonnie is the glue. Bonnie is the glue. Bonnie is the glue. She is the admin for Resilient YOLO. And we could not go another further without you knowing that Bonnie is the glue. <laughs> right. I agree. Thank you, Bonnie. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, we're going to transition to uh, sessions. Uh, what I wanted to share is, so in this room, we have United Way's square one approach uh, driving poverty reduction. So if you're staying for that presentation, you can stay in this room. Um, we also have the community connections and parent educator rooms. They're going to be down the hall. In uh, community connections, we have making space for the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, and we also have a mental health workshop in Yolo County Schools, the K-12 school partnership uh, down in the parent educator room. Um, I want to acknowledge that there's some food in the back still. And with that, um, Woodland High School, their culinary program students uh, are doing all the food for us today. So we've really taken time to um, do food in our community. So yes, please clap for them. Unfortunately, they could not be here today. They couldn't get the time off for the field trip, uh, but they did provide breakfast and lunch. And with that, I think uh, we'll see you back here at 12 p.m. for lunch on the patio. Thank you again. <laughs>